Hello and welcome to this first video for calculus. I would like to start with a simple introductory problem that in principle you could solve using high school mathematics. So the question I'm going to raise in a second is something that I think you should already be able to solve. Hopefully with the recap of the mathematics that you have seen in high school that we do this week the problem will be easier to solve and i will also use it to already hint at an extension of what you have learned in high school so let's look at the outline for this presentation what i will be talking about is crickets and chirping rates so that doesn't sound very mathematical but it will become clear in a moment so as you may know, in warm countries, like maybe you have seen the Olympic Games in Tokyo this year, when it's very warm, you'll hear crickets chirping in the background. Now the chirping rate is the number of sounds they produce in, say, a minute. And apparently this chirping rate is temperature dependent. So if you count how many times the crickets chirp per minute, you can have a rough indication of the temperature outside. So we will have a bit of fun with that. And I will also use that as a kind of step towards function composition, which is basically if you have two known functions, can you combine them to create a new function? So let's see. In a textbook, I have found this problem. So it says the chirping rate of a cricket depends on the temperature. A species of three cricket chirps 160 times per minute at 79 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 times per minute at 64 degrees Fahrenheit. And the question is to find a linear function relating temperature to chirping rate. Now, obviously, the textbook uses Fahrenheit for temperature, which is not what we do in Europe. We would use Celsius. So before I would like to consider this problem, let's look at a related problem, which is the book uses the Fahrenheit temperature scale, and you can define that by the following two characteristics. The dependence between Celsius and Fahrenheit is linear, and we have two data points. One is that water freezes into ice at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and as you know, that's zero degrees Celsius and it boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, as you know, 100 degrees Celsius. So using these two data facts, we can also find the relation between temperature and Fahrenheit and Celsius. So we could ask the related problems. Um, the average temperature in New York in September is 76 degrees Fahrenheit. What is that in Celsius? Or a bit more general, if we denote the temperature in Fahrenheit by TF, so we do a, uh, a subscript F, and F stands for Fahrenheit, and in Celsius by TC, where again the C stands for Celsius, can you give a general formula relating TC to TF? And then it's given that this relation is linear. So I think that both of these questions, if you spend a little bit of time on that, you would be able to solve them. In fact, you can pause the video and consider these two questions first and then see what you get. And you can check that because I'm going to give the solution in a bit of time. So let's see. I am going to solve the original problem in two separate ways. First, let's look at the original problem. So I'm going to consider um, the, the, the temperature in, in Fahrenheit. And I'm going to find this relation that is being asked here. So let's see, what do we have? So we would like to find the chirping rate that I denote here with capital R as a function of Tf, the temperature in Fahrenheit, and we have two data points, those were in the question. So for Tf equals 64, we know that the chirping rate is 100. So if I put on the horizontal axis the temperature, then at 64, I find the chirping rate of 100 on the vertical axis. And similarly, for 79, we know that the corresponding chirping rate should be 160. So for 79, we have 160. So I find 
a data point here and a data point here. And as you know, if you have two points in the plane, there is exactly one straight line going through them. The general equation for a straight line is some number m times tf plus some number b. So probably you would write that in high school as y equals m times x plus b. So the role of x here is temperature in Fahrenheit. The role of y here is chirping rate. This m here is called the slope. And basically it points out whether this line is going up or down and whether it's going up fast or slowly. So if m would be zero, the slope equals zero, you find the horizontal line. If m is positive, the line goes up. And if m is negative, the line goes down, right? So how can we find these numbers? So what I would like to find now, what I want to know is this m in the equation and this b here. And if I have these two, then I have found the linear relationship that was being asked in the original question in the book. So the slope, hopefully you remember that. What you do is you look at the difference on the vertical axis. So delta y in general terms, you look at the distance on the horizontal axis, delta x, and you divide them. So what do we have here? The slope m for our problem is the difference in the chirping rates over the difference in the temperatures. So 160 minus 100 in the numerator and 79 minus 64 in the denominator. And apparently it's a nice number here and you get four. The next thing we would like to know, so we have found M now, M apparently equals four. And now we would like to find B. To do that, you take one of the data points, doesn't matter which one. So here I took that for a temperature of 79, the chirping rate is 160. I plug that into this equation where I already know M, which gives me 160 equals four times 79 plus B. And then we can solve for B. And if you do that, you find B equal to minus 156. And we have solved the original question. So apparently the chirping rate is four times the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 156. Now, um, I would like to extend a little bit on this. So what I'm going to do is look for a similar relationship, but then not with TF, but with TC, so the temperature in Celsius. To do that, I make one step in between, which is conversion of Fahrenheit to Celsius. And you may have seen that before. So from Fahrenheit to Celsius, I would like to write TC, the temperature in Celsius, as a function of TF. I have two data points. TF equals 32, that is the freezing temperature of water to ice, so that's zero in Celsius scale. And similarly to 12 is the boiling temperature, so that's 100. So I put these numbers into my axis here on the horizontal axis i have temperature in fahrenheit the vertical axis temperature in celsius and this is just what we did on the previous slide so i'm looking for a linear relationship i would like to know the slope m and i would like to know this number b so for the slope i take delta y which is 100 over delta x which is 212 minus 32 and if you make that a little bit simpler, you get five over nine. Then I would like to find, I would like to find the number B. And if you plug in 32,0, so Fahrenheit temperature 32, Celsius temperature zero, into the equation, into the equation up here, then you find B and apparently if you do that, you can check that. It's not very interesting. You find what minus 160 over nine. So plugging that in, you would have this relation here and you can make that a little bit simpler. And maybe you have seen this also before. Apparently, if you have a temperature in Fahrenheit, you should subtract 32, then multiply the number you get with five over nine. And that gives you the temperature in 
Celsius. Okay. So now, finally, what I would like to have is if you um, know the temperature in Celsius, what is the corresponding chirping rate? So chirping rate as a function of temperature in Celsius. So we had these data points in Fahrenheit. We know how to convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. And our goal is again to find a straight line R equals M times TC plus B. What are M, what are B? So first I'm going to convert the temperatures. So 64, if you use what we just derived, if you convert that to Celsius, you would find approximately 17.8 degrees. And for 79, you find that it's 26.1. Then I'm going to compute the slope. So again, the difference here, which is 160 minus 100, is up here. And the denominator is the difference on the horizontal axis. So the distance between those two points, those two values. And you find approximately 7.23. So we have now found this number M. And to find the B, we plug in one of the data points. So I plug in that for a temperature in Celsius of 17.8, the chirping rate is 100, which gives me the value of B. I plug that in and we have the relation between chirping rate and temperature in Celsius. So this concludes this introductory example, but let's, let's consider for a moment what we have found now. So the original question was, given a temperature in Fahrenheit, what is the corresponding chirping rate? And we have found this relation, so 4 times Tf minus 156. What we have also done is converted the temperatures to Celsius and redone the exercise. So I add here temperature in Celsius, and we first found the relation between temperatures in Fahrenheit and Celsius. And then we have the chirping rate as a function of temperature in Celsius. So basically what you can now do is if you have a temperature in Fahrenheit here and you would like to find the chirping rate, you could either go directly via the green arrow or you could do it in two steps. You first go to the temperature in Celsius via the red arrow and then you go to the chirping rate via the black arrow, the black relation. Now this is already running ahead a little bit of one of the topics we are going to see, which is function composition. So let me sketch that briefly and I will make another video on function composition. So what it is, is a way to build new functions if you have existing ones. So if you have a function g that assigns to a value x a value g of x, and you have a second function f that assigns to g of x f of g of x, then you could also consider going directly with one arrow. And this green function here is called f after g. So this little circular symbol here is pronounced as after. And this process of combining these two functions into a new one is called function composition. So here is the definition. So f after g is the f of g of x. We take an x value, first apply the function g, and then apply the function f. So we will consider this in a future video, but since this leads to it so naturally, I already wanted to sketch and, and announce this here. So let me wrap up. What have we seen in this video? We have revisited this is something you already know how you can find the equation of a line through two points first you compute the slope and then you compute the b value and we have already seen if you have two functions how you can combine them using function composition to a new one that wraps it up for this video i hope everything was clear if you have any comments let me know and I'll be happy to see you in a future video. Thank you very much.